Welcome to another episode of Comedy Wham Presents, The Past, with me, your host, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. ComedyWham.com is your place to go for features about all Austin comedy. David and I have been talking about this podcast project for a while. I love interviewing funny people, and he loves writing about them. We'll be bringing you podcasts featuring the best in Austin comedy in all its shapes and formats. I'll be doing these interviews in two parts, the past and the current. Consider these bite-sized ways for you to get to know the folks that make the Austin comedy scene one of the best in the country. And now, the past, with our guest, Katie Pengra. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thanks so much for having me. Sure. It's awesome to get to meet you. I've seen your comedy, but I've never had a full conversation. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely excited. (laughs) Well, I like to break the ice by asking you to pick one word to describe your past. One word to describe my past. Um, varied. Varied. Well, that's a great transition that I'm going to use because I think everybody needs to hear this, which comes from your website, and it is the first sentence of your bio. Do you remember writing this? Is this going to... Vaguely. I remember writing it because I was trying to be an asshole when I was writing it because I I just hate comedy bios. Uh So if that's what you're about to read, I have a feeling I know what it is. (laughs) All right. It is, Katie Pengra is a straight lesbian with multi-ethnic white parents who give her an endless stream of family-friendly blue comedic inspiration. (laughs) Yes, I do remember writing that now. Yes. Uh, yeah, I just, I, comedy bios are terrible and I hate when people, I mean, most of them are, they're just terrible and most of them, you know, people have to write themselves Mm -hmm. and I get it that that's hard and a weird thing to do, but there's just nothing more irritating than when people are like, oh, they're my family friendly style comes from my quirky parents. (laughs) I don't know. I just think it's so obnoxious. So I just... Tried to write the most uh, troped bio I could with all the options in it. And I love that people don't can't see this, but during that, you're, there's a lot of rolling of the eyes as you're talking <laughs> about. Um, just uh. yeah, I am. Uh, I am well known for my eye rolling <laughs> behavior. <laughs> it's probably good that people can't see me all the time. Okay, so I just I just said that I. I've admitted that I've read your bio, but I don't remember making a note about this. Where did you grow up? Arizona. Arizona. Yep, so. cent- central part of Arizona, the Valley of the Sun, as oh. it's called. <laughs> as yeah. opposed to the Valley of... Of what? Southern I don't know. Texas. I mean, basically, it's the Valley of uh, a desert um, of racist people <sighs> and Mormons. That's pretty much Arizona. And now we know your inspiration. <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> yeah. How did you make your way to Austin? Um, I So I lived in Arizona until I graduated um, undergrad. And I had always wanted to go to Los Angeles and be an actor. That's what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. I would have done that right after high school if my parents wouldn't have murdered me. Um, so I had to stay and go to college. But that was always my plan since I was 12 was that I was going to move to L.A. and act. And that's all I ever wanted. Wow. Um, so I did. And I lasted two years. And I hated every minute of it. It was oh. so miserable. Um, so I ended up moving back in with my parents. But they had moved across the country to Maryland. So I moved in with my parents in Maryland where I knew nobody mm-hmm. for uh, like nine months or a year. So I got some money and... I had some friends who lived out here and they were like, you know what? You should just come here. It's great. There's so many opportunities and you can figure out what you want to do with your life. Um, so yeah, I actually got an internship at KUT, the NPR affiliate here. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of what helped me make the decisions. I was like, all right, well, I got something to go for and friends there. So that's how I got here. When you went out to LA and even at the age of 12, when you were like, I want to be an actor. Was there a comedic element to that, or is it just, I want to act? Um, I just wanted to act. Um, I mean, I'd always, I've always preferred comedy, um, and comedic stuff my whole life, but yeah, I just, I just wanted to act, and I had always done plays and stuff like that. I did speech and debate through high school and college, but I always did like the, the acting portion of it, Mm -hmm. or like the public speaking portion. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had just always done it and that was always a part of my life. And, you know, you, I lived so close to Los Angeles that just seemed like the next step Mm -hmm. if I really wanted to make a career of it. Um, 
But I don't know, you know, the, the career of acting is very different than the idealist idealistic idea of or whatever when you're a kid when you're like yeah i'm just gonna go be an actor right. but the reality of it like kind of fucking sucks a lot mm -hmm. and i didn't want to do it anymore so yeah i just I, I don't know i just hated how um i it felt very obsessed with like looks and like how you were supposed to be you know like you know your weight and your hair and your face yeah. and all of this stuff and even just the two years i was exposed to that um i really hated it and I just didn't want to do it. I was like, "That's this sucks." And maybe if I stuck with it longer, you know, I could be one of those awesome, those awesome actors who, you know, like Amy Schumer, who like rail against the norms yeah. and stuff. But uh, I don't know. I just didn't have the foresight to stick it through and try to make any sort of change. So I just left mm -hmm. like a big chicken. So, <laughs> but you know, just as with everything, you kind of end up in a comfortable spot eventually, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do when I grow up. So <laughs> I'm 30. <laughs> so it's fine. Plenty of time. Yeah. I'll be fine. <laughs> what would you say are some of your uh, influences either in comedy or outside of comedy for the things that you do today? Well, I mean, some of my earliest memories uh, were my dad and I always watched television together. Um, and so some of my earliest, like, comedic memories are with Pee-wee's Playhouse. Oh, yes. Um, Pee-wee's Playhouse, The Simpsons, um, basically anything that was a cartoon. Um, and, yeah, and so I grew up, like, you know, watching all that kind of stuff, and that's still like, where my humor lies, and that's still my mm -hmm. favorite kind of thing. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's – that – and then as far as actual comedians go, um, Maria Bamford was the reason why I started doing mm. stand-up because I didn't really know much about stand-up. I wasn't one of those people who was like, I've been watching it since I was a child. Yeah. I didn't know stand-up existed and what I did see of it, you know, was all, I don't know, like huge performers, you know, that I just had nothing in common with. Um and then when I saw Maria Bamford for the first time, I was like, oh, she's just like this little weirdo. And you can just, you know, be a little weirdo and it's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So you've made your way from from Arizona to L.A. to Maryland. Mm -hmm. and then you make it to Austin. Yeah. You've got a cool gig at KUT. Mm hmm How do you get plugged into the comedy scene from there? Well, I, when I moved here, I moved in with my friend Ralph Hardesty, who is another comic in town. Mm -hmm. And I knew him through doing speech and debate in college. Huh. He went to, uh, Illinois State University and I went to Arizona State University, but we competed against one another because, you know, we would travel all over the country every weekend. So we met through that and he happened to have moved here for, you know, who knows what reason, um, that we all ended up here. <laughs> um, but he was here and he was looking for a roommate. So we moved in together, and at that time, he he ended up moving here because he got laid off from his uh, job. He was a professor um, at Cornell University, and so he wow. was living off of this, like, awesome unemployment check, and <laughs> so he didn't work for the first year we lived together, and I was super underemployed. I was working at Starbucks, and we were just, like, barely getting by, and we had no creative outlets. We were like, dude, we've fucking got to do something to get us out of the mm -hmm. house. Um, and we had talked about doing stand-up because neither one of us had ever done it. And we were just interested, but it was scary, you know. And then one night I came home after a horrible date with a loser. Um, and I was just like, this is a nightmare. We've got to do something more productive than this. We're going to an open mic. So I drug him to um, Kick Butt Coffee on Airport. Okay. And that was the first open mic that we did. And yeah, from there, we just loved it and just kept doing it. Do you remember how that, that first open mic went? For I you? do. I do remember. I remember I was, I, I typed out my set verbatim. I had it color coded by joke. Um, oh yes, it was very, <laughs> and I like read it straight off the paper. And I remember getting like a few laughs, mostly groans. <laughs> I remember the first joke I said was about like Gabrielle Giffords that she's the governor, I think, in Arizona who got shot in the mm -hmm. face. Um, <laughs> I was from Arizona. I felt like I was allowed to talk about it. Uh, I don't even remember. It was some terrible play on words about like losing your head or something. Um, 
And yeah, I got a lot of groans and I was like, I kind of liked it though. I kind of liked getting groans and I still do to this day. So it's fine. (laughs) Well, I was actually expecting that your first comedic experience would not necessarily be stand up because you do video series. And I thought that maybe your first experience was actually doing a, a, a video. No, actually I hadn't done, um, I hadn't done anything with like video production or anything until, um, I went, I got my master's degree in Austin. Well, technically San Marcos, um, in digital media. And that was when I started kind of getting into production and all that stuff. And it was around that same time that I became friends with Dustin Swaylock and, uh, some other people that we collaborate with now. Um, mm-hmm. that I had met through stand up. So stand up came first and then I kind of met okay. like my creative production partners through that. Okay. So you get through that first open mic mm-hmm. and you do, you keep doing more stand up. When did you feel, because you, you've been living with this dream since you were 12 that you wanted to be an actor. Mm-hmm. When did you realize or accept or embrace that, Hey, I think comedy is my thing. Well, I don't think I have embraced that, honestly. <laughs> um, I just, uh, I think that in the past few years, I have realized that, um, having a creative outlet and performing in some facet is something that is innate to me mm-hmm. and that I will always do mm-hmm. and that I need for some sanity's sake. Um, but when you're a kid, everyone just says, like, there's kind of this blanket statement of, like, what are you going to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. Or, like, that you have to, like, choose a thing and do that. Yeah. And I think it took me a long time to shake out that you don't have to just be a thing, you know? I don't have to be a comic or an actor or a producer or whatever. Um, these are all just things I really like to do and I would like to continue doing. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I don't know. So I guess I just... I'm more of a creative, as stupid as that sounds. (laughs) No, not at all. I think you're right. I mean, looking at your website, that that was the thing I picked up on is she's not just the comic. She she does a lot of things. Yeah. I just, I I feel like I always get very, I get bored very easily or I get frustrated very easily Mm -hmm. with something. So I'm kind of in a lull right now where like I'm really kind of frustrated with the comedy scene, like for stand up. And I just wasn't really having fun on stage anymore. So I, on, I, I honestly haven't been doing that many shows lately. I've kind of moved to more production stuff and, um, yeah, just other things that actually like excite me and are a positive influence in my life mm-hmm. because, you know, and I'll go back to comedy eventually, but I try to step away from things when they start not being fun anymore. Right. Right. Which maybe is an immature thing to do too. Maybe I should stick through things when they're rough <laughs> and get better because of it. But I'm a quitter. There's no pattern there at all, Katie. You I know, know right? Left, <laughs> left LA, left Maryland. I know. It was the snow though. But I'm it's sure. nice. Oh yeah, forget the snow. <laughs> but I mean, the, the cool thing about creative stuff is you can kind of interweave it all together and right. you never really leave. You just start making something new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can relate to that. <laughs> Would you say that you've settled on a comedic style? No. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say that. I have had other people say that I tend to be, uh, angry, an angry comic, (laughs) or, um, that I come from a place of like frustration or like lewdness as well. Uh But I mean, I don't really see that. Like, I think that. I don't know. I enjoy all kinds of comedy and I would like to, I don't know, keep working on a broad spectrum of abilities, but yeah. So I don't know. I don't know if that's really an answer, but. (laughs) It works. Yeah. Yeah. Plus it's tough if you're moving into other creative realms that, well, that's, that's not where I need to define myself anymore. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, but but I mean, and it would be better if I had a thing, you know what I mean? Like. People who are able to do totally clean stand up or who only focus really on like women's issues mm-hmm. or like, frankly, that's better marketable mm. like material to have, which is stupid, but it's true. I mean, that's what helps people get famous is people being able to describe them as, Oh, that's the blank comic. Ah, interesting. You know, like Amy Schumer, she's like, yeah. 
she plays the like drunk slutty comic or whatever. Like people need an, a way to describe you. Mm-hmm. That's just how it is. Um, whether or not you can move on from that is up to you. Mm-hmm. So it would almost be better if I had a thing, you know, like Brian Gar is like the video game nerd comic <laughs> or whatever. So yeah, yeah. Well, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you think we must know about your your past? Must know <sighs> about my past? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, there's a million stories I could go into, but. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can tell you that I was a uh, Mormon for a brief period of time, but I'm, I got out on the other side okay. Wow. So that's always a fun fact. Wow. Well, you heard it here. <laughs> Second, third, I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. No, I'm glad you course. got out. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> All right. Well, that's a wrap on Comedy Wham Presents the Past with our guest, Katie Pengra. Tell us where we can find you on social media or wherever, Katie. You can find me on Twitter at at KPenguins. Um, my website, katiepenger.com. Um, yeah, that's that pretty much does it. If you like pictures of cute puppies, follow me on Instagram, just <laughs> Katie Pengra. <laughs> Very cool. Who doesn't like cute puppies? Okay, well, listen to part two for more information about what Katie is up to today. You've been listening to Comedy Wham Presents, the past hosted by me, Valerie, and brought to you by David Thomas. Be sure to visit ComedyWham.com and give a follow on Twitter at ComedyWham. I'm Valerie, and that's been funny.